The Fantasy Edge with Richard Seville and Dennis Sosick. Hello and welcome to The Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Seville of FantasySixPack.net and joining me shortly will be Davis Peng, who uh, is filling in for Dennis this week and we kind of have a little bit of a Christmassy kind of show today for you. Uh, we are, aren't are doing waivers like we did last week. We did sort of an awards show last week. Um, this is just following the two games, the uh, Raiders and Browns and the uh, Vikings and Bears. Just uh, The Vikings and Bears just completed. And uh, uh, actually, the Vikings and Bears was a pretty good game. And <laughs> if you like, rock 'em sock 'em. Like, I mean, it was just like, it, 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 there was an atmosphere in that game. And I think that's kind of what wasn't a, well, it wasn't a great football game, but the atmosphere of it was, was interesting. But anyway, uh, Davis, glad to have you filling in once again. You're always, uh, it's always here, always interesting to hear your views on stuff. Thanks for having me back, man. And I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I can I come off thing. as a contrarian, apparently, a very bad one at that time. That's a good thing. No, no, no. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's I'm good. still riding my victory lap on Russell Gage after we talked about it last time when I was on the show. I was like, Russell Gage, baby. Here he comes. And he uh, you, you were absolutely right. And uh, Gage uh, tore it up. And, uh, you know, I mean, Cordero Patterson, you, you relied on him all. I mean, it happened to a lot of people. We were talking about this before the podcast. It just seems like uh, they say start your studs, but the studs were duds. Most of the studs, like I would say almost all the studs, the majority yeah. of studs were duds. I mean, okay. Oh, you're telling me. I just got, I just got beat because I had Hunter Renfro and didn't start Parker in a matchup. No, um, and, and at the end of the day, it's, some of it is matchup based, but some of the studs, yeah, they usually do well, right? Like Devontae Adams did pretty well. Mm. Mm. Uh, that's where the list Justin Jefferson did okay today Travis Kelsey you know 36 points this week I mean, or 40 points depending what kind of like, format you're in so it wasn't yeah. a total dud I mean Jonathan Taylor too so on and so forth oh I have to say that uh, Mark Andrews carried me God, he that he did the best imitation of Travis Kelsey this week thank God he, he might have just saved people's season by himself or yeah. costed people their seasons too oh, he's um, awesome yeah, he's 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 Kelsey-esque he, he is, I mean, he's usual. I mean, he's just, he's one of the guys, he's up, he's the, he's one of the big three. I mean, obviously. a lot of the tight ends stood up, I mean, like stepped up this week, right? You're talking Kelsey, you're talking Kittle that still did okay. I mean, he had three solid, consistent weeks. You got Mark Andrews, Hunter Henry came in out of the blue and put up 20 plus. Yes, it's, that's true. It's a, it's a good week to, to have a solid tight end this, this, this week of all week. Yeah. Yeah. When, if you had a top tight end, you, you were, yeah, they were, they were the ones that helped you, uh, this week, but you couldn't rely on your inner stars. You know, you mentioned, uh, I don't know if you mentioned Jaji Harris. I think you mentioned him before the before the podcast. Yeah, but <laughs> he kind of uh, screwed me this week. But then, uh, but, I mean, but we had like uh, uh, Fournette and Godwin and Evans. That's just. I mean, if you had Fournette, you're probably right and happy in a PPR league. He had what ten catches or something, or nine catches, some ridiculous amount of free points. Yeah. It's not the so end I suppose seven uh, receptions. My bad. Seven receptions. It's not the end of the world for you. Yeah, but you might lose them for the semis. So. Yeah. No. That's fantasy football. Just pivot. Ro- Rojo might be on the waiver still. Yeah. Um, Devin Singletary did well for me this week. I actually had to start him in the league, and I unironically had to start him, and it worked out. So your season's never over until it's actually over. Mm. Uh, that actually is part of the news today is uh, the the Buccaneers downfield. Uh, Chris Godwin is out with an ACL. It's out for the season. You will not have Godwin out. Uh, for what a little small sample size, I like Ty Johnson. He's been solid this season when he got the chance to uh, share of Michael Carter. Um, I want to say he had, what, three or four, like, respectable weeks this season? Mm-hmm. And, you know, as, and for backup running backs, respectable can vary. But in half PPR, he had, what, week five, seven, eight, and nine, where they're both ten above 10 points. Uh-huh. I mean, one of them came on a touchdown. But, you know, he catches receptions. He gets dink and dunks. He runs for 30, 40 yards or 20 yards. It, it kind of works out. It's not amazing. But it, yeah. it, it could be worse. You could be with Matt Breida. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Just taking a look at the uh, the the top ten finishers. Uh, I better switch to half PPR here. Um, Tyler Huntley. What do you make of this guy? <laughs> Who? 
Tyler uh, Huntley. Oh, Tyler Huntley, man. Um, I'm kind of hoping Lamar Jackson just sits out the rest of the season. I think are they official out of the playoffs yet? I think they're close to or are. Uh, I think they're still alive. Yeah, they they're they're, 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 they're still alive. Yeah, they are. Really I can tell you exactly where they are. I'm just getting, I never have the right stuff up when I need it. There it is. And yeah, they question. are. The they are game. eight and six, and they are just outside the seven. They're just they're 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 they're, they're one, they're one game behind. Um, and it didn't help that the Browns took another win. So I they, think they're going to put Lamar back in, but I kind of hope they don't because Huntley is funny enough. Huntley is their new Tyrod Taylor. They have the ability to trade away a guy just like Tyrod Taylor was originally a a, um, a Raven to a QB needy team that might bite on him because he's having some solid games. You know, he's he's uh, Matt Castle right now. He's Tyrod Taylor. He's someone that might have value for the Ravens, and they need to call the season over. They already have enough injuries. They're, what are yeah. they going to do when they get to the playoffs? They're, they're the most injury-ridden team next to the Titans. It's true. Uh, all you can to so start Tyler Huntley and get get your money and get try to get people to up bet you next season. If you know if Ryan Fitzpatrick could have gotten a job this year, I think Huntley has a chance next year. Yeah, it definitely uh, definitely but did wonders for his uh, resume. Tyler Huntley's only twenty three. Yeah, so people keep thinking he's like this long term veteran. He's only twenty three years old. He, he has value right now. Yep. Uh, <laughs> another uh, guess who made the top ten this week and. Uh, <laughs> is Jared Goff QB seven? Uh, oh, <laughs> man. I'm not sure if you remember one of my posts I made a while back on Twitter, and even I actually made it on our fantasy six pack articles mm-hmm. about taking Jared Goff your final pick of every fantasy draft because <laughs> there is a chance he does well. Right? There's a chance he could have done well. Right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, hindsight right now, he didn't do amazing by any means, but he had some serviceable weeks. And to top it off, you knew he was going to have a job because mm-hmm. they didn't draft him. You know, they didn't draft a Davis Mills. They didn't draft a Kellen Mond. They didn't draft um, whoever the hell the Bucks took. I forgot his name, but they didn't draft anybody. You know, there's no Drew Locke behind him. So you knew he was playing 16 games. Or, well, 17 games this year, short of an injury. Yeah. And it, I mean, at your final pick of best ball, round 18, yeah, sign me up for some Jared Goff. And he, he really paid off this. Hmm. Really paid off. Uh, and uh, this game that just uh, that just finished, uh, Justin Fields actually made the top 10 as well. He was number nine with uh, 16 really? points. Yes, he did. Oh, because <laughs> yes, he, he just did. threw a touchdown. Uh, just, right a, just ahead. Yeah, he threw a touchdown at the end. It got called for him. But, but he had a lot of rushing yards. Uh, this game. He, and to be fair, he also could have had one to two more touchdowns if Jimmy Graham wasn't terrible. If Darnell Mooney was a little bit taller on his left foot, <laughs> <laughs> he really could have. I don't. I don't think he played a bad game. I, I have not been the best Justin Fields guy towards midseason. I was a little excited for him coming in after his preseason amazingness, but he really didn't look that bad this game. He really knew how to move himself out of the pocket. And you're talking about one touchdown. That was all he got, and he still was relevant. Man, imagine if he got two or three. Which is very possible to at least get that second one mm-hmm. or that third one even. So I'm ex- I'm excited and I'm happy for him to have a, a top ten week this week or a top twelve week. Uh can you guess who was the top RB or who was R B one this week for and is it, is it, is it Don't get Taylor? just guess. Just guess. Don't ju- no, it was Duke Johnson. <laughs> That was my second guess because I'm a Dolphins fan and um, I know he had a pretty good week, but I didn't think it was that good. Oh yeah, he, two he, touchdowns, he, right? He's just ahead of just ahead of Taylor. Uh, Taylor came in second. Um, all the rest of them. Fact about Duke Johnson right now, in uh, in underdog best ball tournaments, only eight teams drafted Duke Johnson. Um, or like me, and then like four of them are in the playoffs, and all four of them progress into the <laughs> next round of best ball. <laughs> Something ridiculous like that. Like a very small handful of people drafted him. Some of them made it, and now because of Duke Johnson's performance, there are and plus other things. But let's let's, let's chalk up to this amazing performance. They're gonna progress to the semifinal. Mm. All of them, everyone that had them. Yeah, most of them are usual suspects, and uh, uh, that that made the top ten. Uh, Donta Foreman made number nine. Uh, you had uh, Devin Singletary uh, made number six uh, in the RBs. <laughs> yeah, and Jeff Wilson. Uh, well, he was filling in for. Uh, uh, Elijah he, Mitchell. Yeah, Elijah Mitchell. And so he got uh, RB3. Uh, the WRs, Tyreek came in the top. And Brandon Cooks. I like Brandon Cooks. He's good. He's the best Houston guy you can get. I mean, he's been pretty solid all year, generally. I mean, he has ups and downs. But he, you're gonna I mean, get everybody that. does, right? Yeah. Everybody, this is, you know, fantasy's kind of gone this weird route where you have to have a guy that's producing every week. And 
this in real in real in realness for anyone that's been playing fantasy for more than you know the last five years or three years that's not the case you're gonna have down week and this week is a reminder of that yeah you're gonna even your studiest guy and i would consider brandon cooks a stud at wide receiver too um they're just gonna have up and down weeks it happens and that's normal i mean tyreek hill i mean Devonte adams i mean short of adams keenan allen and like one other receiver like that's not that's not the norm you're not supposed to have guys that give you 15 a week no. even in people <laughs> and no, no, it's it's no, it's 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 solid enough production, and he's uh, definitely uh, um, he's, he's, he's he's right in there. He's such a value. Uh, yep. And uh, this guy that I made a joke of a little bit, like you know, Gabriel Davis was <laughs> WR three, but G- Davis is actually a good football wide receiver. He's a good player. I mean, oh, I tell me. I I changed my mind about him. I think he's I think he rivals uh, Stefan Diggs. You know, he might even be better. Dare I say? I don't know if he's better than Diggs, but he definitely has that level of kind of reminds me of Darno Mooney, who we would just watch today, right? Like you see something special in this. Yeah, you know, it's a di- it's different. The kind of special those players are, but you see something. You see them being relevant, right? You he could be the Emmanuel Sanders to Antonio Brown, or the Emmanuel Sanders to Demarius Tom. But like that would be great, and you see it when you watch Gabriel Davis Darno Mooney. Like you can see these amazing number twos existing in the league. Yeah, and yeah, I drafted so much Gabriel Davis coming to the season, and I mean he costed me nothing and and best ball, and I felt like an idiot for a while. But, you know, week 13, week 14, week 15, he's been kind of having that relevance. Four touchdowns in three games? My yeah. Gross. He's a, he was a, he's a streaky guy. He's, um, he is streaky, and that makes him hard to start, you know, like, uh, you he, know. He's such a good flex, though. He's a guy that's Tim and Dawson Knox, right? You start them and just go, you know, what if? Well, I, I, like I Van Jefferson, right? Uh, like, uh, like a Van Jefferson sort of guy. Exactly. Just like Van Jefferson, who has been amazing too. Uh, but yeah, I drafted like 30% of my best ball teams with Gabriel Davis. I was really into him and it didn't pay out for the first, you know, eight weeks of the season or seven weeks of the season. But since week eight to now, he's had fantasy relevancy yeah. and it's been weird. <laughs> it's been really weird. Uh, <laughs> number four, I'm Christian. I'm brought him up. He's actually one of my guys that I, I really enjoyed this and I'm hoping yeah. he continues to get better. Yeah, I, I made a joke the last time you were on here about like, you know, reading long articles about guys like Jake Grayville. Maybe I should. Maybe I should read these long articles about the guy and maybe I might learn something. But anyways. You know, I, I, I didn't get the reading on it. Um, but I, all I, I took from him was when I watched his final few games last season and him playing in the postseason against the Colts. Like he had moments where you could like he's getting open. He, yeah, I he's test. Not, he's raw. He's not finite at all, but you know, it's a really big what up. Mm. He could also do nothing either, which kind of sucks. And, uh, your, your man Gage is, was number six. Uh, number five, uh, Amon St. Brown. Did you, Amon Ra St. Brown. You know, did you know, you probably do know. He's, I wrote uh, a song about Amon Ra, actually, jokingly. Equinemius <laughs> St. Brown's brother. <laughs> what? I did not know. Yeah. Amon Ra oh. and, uh, and Equinemius are, are, are brothers. Oh, that's hilarious. I, I, who, their parents know how to name people, that's for sure. <laughs> name them for, to be famous. That's, that's I don't know. I mean, who, who would name their kid Amon Ra? I mean, but then again, who would, who would name their kid Chester? <laughs> also got a good point, too. I actually would name so, my kid Amon over, uh, Chester. Chester does not seem like it gets anywhere. <laughs> eh, it's kind of like, what is this, a 19th century? <laughs> Um, anyways, uh, just to round out the top ten, you had Debo Samuel and Keenan Allen at number ten. Uh, Love them. Oh, oh, I oh I missed out. Well, uh, Marquez Valdez, Gandling, who um, did pretty good for the pack. Uh, you know, he's someone that like I don't like as as a football player overall. Like, he's someone that you think oh, should be drafted every year and should be held on. Just like we're talking about Gabriel Davis, we're talking about these streaky guys. That's yeah. MVS right now. I mean, depending if Aaron Rodgers is on the team next year. But if Aaron Rodgers is, MVS gets, he's Brashad Perryman. You know, he's just one of those guys that he's one and done. He, you know, three catches, 75 yards on a touchdown. Yeah, it was his You're day. I mean, but but next week it could be Lazard's day. I don't know. If you look at MVS's stat throughout the year, they're je- like, you can tell that they're there. Well, like I they guess can I can get those be, up here. Yeah, like he has a chance to be that guy whenever like it's Aaron Rodgers. Like you look, you look at his targets. It's 10, 9, 5, and 7. And only targets he gets are usually deep shots. Yeah. 
Week well, one, eight targets. Week two, week three, week four targets. I mean, they're not great, but Lazard was twenty points, eighteen. That's MVS. He's just a deep ball guy, and you just crappier than man Jefferson, but high, just as high upside. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, in the it's last like game, when the, the when the Packers played Baltimore, um, Rogers uh, targeted Lazard twice in the end zone. He couldn't haul him in. Well. I mean, they weren't they weren't very catchable, but he was targeting like Lazard this. there. Would you rather have MVS or Michael Hardman? Oh, MV. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, see what I'm yeah. saying? Like for a guy that gets drafted, kind of for some reason every year, Michael Hardman or any of the Patrick Mahomes receivers that aren't Tyreek Hill, I would rather have MVS. Yeah, I probably would rather have MVS. Uh, Robbie Anderson, it, or MVS. The, the the thing about I mean, we can we can talk about it, where <laughs> where the I offense know. of the Chiefs is going these days. I'm not sure about that i mean i mean kelsey the kelsey's monster game uh was uh you know that was that was kind of out of the blue c- in comparison to what he's been doing really lately i think i think uh, uh mark andrews has been a lot more consistent than than kelsey really but they both had monster games this week so yeah i, don't know. I, I mean if i was mark andrews is someone i'm probably going to draft next year I'm probably going to write off Kelsey the next, after maybe this next season will be the last time I kind of draft him, but he's going to go in the first and second rounds again. I'd rather have Mark Andrews at round four or three. He's younger. Yeah. He has a more prominent role. He's actually a better talent than his competition. Mm. I mean, we could argue that Travis Kelsey is more talented than. Well, him. I don't know about that. I think Kittle's, Kittle's. Oh, no, I mean, no one catches a football team. like Kittle does. Not, not, not. I mean, the competition on his team. He's, oh, you know, yeah. Mark right, Andrews is right. a better talent than the, his teammates, his competition. Um, oh, yeah. He's, so, he's he's definitely uh better than Rashad I, Bateman and um, it doesn't, Marquise Brown. Yeah, and Sammy Watkins there. You just I mean those I think Sammy Watkins and Bateman are kind of like and you gotta add in Duvernay as well there. I think those guys are sort of uh, I th- those guys are kind of in a, in a nebula of their own, you know. So whereas it's it really is just well, for now it's Devonta Freeman. And that's and why I would Martin. probably be more interested in taking Andrews next season at a at a better price than taking you know, uh, Travis Kelsey at round one, round two. Those 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 uh, tight ends are going to go high. Uh, I don't know. It's going to be a weird season, and we're going to. That's one thing we're going to be talking about later in the shows, folks. Is we are going to take a take a, a very early look at how we're looking at the top ten. This is going to be very different, of course, by when when August rolls around. But it's kind of fun to see how we feel things are at the moment. Um, I think we it's touched a fun throw in Dynasty for sure. Yeah. Uh, just rounding out the rest of the scores of the, and we were just talking about like, uh, like Kelsey and, uh, Andrews had monster games. And we mentioned, and Hunter Henry was number three tight end and Dutch, uh, Dalton Schultz. Love Dalton Schultz. Number four. Yeah, yeah he's what great. A deal this year. Kittle right in the mix. Number five. And, uh, Ertz Komet. Komet had 10 points. He got a lot of, yeah, he got a lot of target. He's getting yards too. Uh, Moreau got 10. Uh, Pitts and then right. Horstead. <laughs> Got the touchdown, and he was no. He rounded out. Horstead got the the last touchdown of uh, Monday. So there's, but there's more players. This is just as it stands now. There is still Tuesday to go, and there's four teams yet to calculate in all this. So these are losers as it stands at the moment as we do our podcast. So let's let's uh, let's get into this uh, juicy thing. I'm just looking at the. Uh, this was the this was the top twelve ECR like. <laughs> Just think of how good this looked back in August. Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, number two. <laughs> Alvin Kamara, number three. Derrick Henry, number four. Ezekiel Elliott, number five. <laughs> Zeke's had a good season, man. People want to hate on him. He had a good season still. Uh, all right. Uh, Devontae Adams. Uh, <laughs> uh, pardon me. Aaron, Aaron Jones. Jones Aaron Jones and then Devontae Adams. And then Tyreek Hill. Saquon Barkley, number nine. <laughs> oh, God, no. Yeah, uh, Nick Chubb. That number ten, Jonathan Taylor, eleven. Let's pause for one second. But did you guys know that Devontae Booker had eighty-four yards or like eighty-three yards on like thirteen carries? Yeah, he had, he broke uh, he broke a cup uh, broke a big one there too, didn't he? If he gets one touchdown, he would have finished in like the top what twelve running back. Mm-hmm. That's just funny. Like in Saquon couldn't do anything all season long for the one game. Yeah, he's uh, it's not just the injuries; he's busted. Uh, it, it might yeah. be th- as a result of the injuries. For sake, old Barkley. Sure. But uh, let's just talk about him for a minute, then. What about next season? Like, is where, where, where are we? What are we doing with Saquon? I'm not, I'm not targeting him. I will actively target Saquon, depending on 
how people view him next, right? So right now, people are thinking second, third round. Okay. I think he actually falls further. Um, I think people are just going to be very sour. The way I look at him would be the same way I think people are looking at Josh this year, where he was in the fifth round. And don't get me wrong. That's right. Jacobs That's a good way to put it. Josh Jacobs didn't have an amazing season, but he, he could have, right? We we can say that he could have had a good season yeah. if the Raiders didn't implode on themselves, if the Raiders didn't pay Kenyon Drake, if the Raiders just weren't terrible. Like Josh Jacobs could have had an okay season. And I think Saquon's that guy that if you're in the fourth, fifth round, and you're just like, you know what? I'll take a chance on Todd Gurley on the Falcons. I'll take a chance on David Johnson's first year in the Texans, right? Where they both did fine, by the way. They both had a thousand yards from scrimmage uh -huh. and like eight touchdowns. Like, I think you could do that. Melvin Gordon on his sophomore year is an example of a guy that had a bunch of injuries. His rookie came out and didn't do anything. Not to say that Saquon's a rookie, but he's a guy that's recuperating from a ton of injuries and that could research. He's still young. He's under 25. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we just have, sometimes you just need, it takes time to come back. And that, and that's reasonable. It takes time to come back to get your confidence, to be strong, to be football ready, right? Yeah. So I think fourth, fifth round next year, I, I'm looking at him. But that just depends on people. Now, if he's overpriced at second round, then yeah, I'm going to go somewhere else. Third no. round, I'll, I'll go somewhere else because you can get some shoot, you know, big guys. You, you could have got Keenan Allen, right? Like, so, um, but fourth and fifth. I think I want him. I want that stash. I want people to be to hate him like they hate David Johnson. Mark Ingram ended up on Baltimore at 30 years old, right? I, I want those guys because it's running back. He's and the talent at some point has been apparent. So it's not like he came out was uh, terrible. He was one of the yeah. most amazing rookies we've seen. I do. I do like. I think he kind of hit the nail on the head that he kind of belongs in that uh, Josh Jacobs uh, range of thinking. Yeah. And that and that's okay. And that's fine. that's fine. That's no, exactly no, that's absolutely all right. But uh, yeah. definitely not. Uh, um, I would take a shot on him before I take a shot on Carson ever again. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, I, I think Miles so Sanders. You taking Miles Sanders next year? I, I don't no. know. I feel like I'd rather take Saquon. No, I wasn't even taking him this year. <laughs> yeah, right. So that's how I look at it, and I could be wrong, but. I, I don't want another guy to have Saquon in the fifth round next. Huh. I would feel I'd feel like I got wrong. <laughs> Anyways, let's uh, take a look at the the original top ten here. I, I will post this uh, this list of just for people's uh, just so they can take a look and see w w what we were drafting back in August. So that uh, Ooh, I'll post this in list. Yeah, just taking a look at uh, like uh, after eleven is though, eleven. Jonathan bad. Taylor number twelve. Stefan Diggs. Mm. <laughs> Diggs did fine, actually. Especially Diggs did Diggs fine, guy. but I, I, I wouldn't draft him in the first round. To be fair, he should never have been drafted in the first round. I think he's a very good second round guy. Yeah, he's good second round, yeah. He, but they, not, not, they, uh, but, he but, should but, never have been drafted in the first. Um, but he's still going to finish as a top five receiver this year. And I, <sighs> and if you draft him in the first round, you need to still got the overall decent value. There's a lot of guys that did not get close to their value. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. DK Metcalf. Diggs actually did fine, especially if you're in PPR. I think he fell under 10 one time in full PPR. So it's not the end of the world. If you're in half, he fell under 10 one, two, two times. So he, he wasn't the worst by any means, especially if you draft him at the end. And this is coming from a Diggs hater. So. Kelsey at 13. That's okay. Um, Calvin Ridley at 14. Big disappointment in here. Don't know what is happening. He never did come back. He never came back, and that's a shame. Yeah. And he had a very easy schedule early on, so we never have to see what he would have had to deal with if he would have stuck around on the top. Mm. Eckler at 15. Kelsey in the top 12 also. Huh? Kelsey was drafted in the top 12 quite a bit, actually. Oh, yeah, he but, was. He, he was. He, but he was He was ECR 13, so, you know, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. interchangeable there. That means and that Ridley at 14. Uh, next season, uh, I think people are going to be about sh shy about him. Because, you know, he could just say, well, I'm still not ready. Uh, like, you know, he could take a guy like that. He, could he take out, uh, take time out of football again? You know, it, it sort of it stigmatizes him. This was his contract year, too. Mm. This was anyway. his contract year that if they don't extend him. Oh, we could talk about Ridley for hours. Um, number yeah. 15, Austin Eckler. Talk about a guy who's moving on up. There he is. Uh, I love ECR him in 15. I was so scared at the drop. Isn't that terrible? Yeah. Uh, He's a great player, great person. He attends podcasts and shows for fantasy football analysts, all even the small timer ones. It's a good really? Guy. Yeah, he does. Quite oh. a bit, actually. More than I thought. 
Huh. Um, That's cool. He was on streams. He's on people's streams. I know at least a few I've seen him in. And he just, he works out hard. Came back from injuries. He's a small man, but he lifts like a guy that's 6'5". Mm. Just, you know, sometimes I'm just, you know, and that's and that's on me. I, I know. But sometimes I like to separate my personal life from fantasy. And uh, I, this is a guy that I actually did that on it. And it bit me hard. And it bit me hard. <laughs> uh, uh, Hopkins at 16, probably all right there. Um, yeah, he did not have a good season. Didn't he, have a good season. He, he could, he could, he could. He's he's a bounce back candidate though. Um, I don't think so. You don't think so? I, I, not not him as a talent, but him as a cardinal. Mm. Him as a cardinal is not something that's been that good. Um, Kyler Murray has not been that good. And if you look at the offense, the way they run in the Cardinal land right now, it's it's all very running back heavy. The it money is. they put is for the running back. The the way they run the game, it's it's smash mouth football or read option football. It's definitely not a pass heavy team. It's uh, yeah, I've always found that the the Cardinals tend to be a bit chaotic in their game script. Um, I don't think Hopkins should be in the first two rounds. If anything, he should be a mid third, bottom or early fourth. Huh. I would never take him in the first two rounds at, at this point, as long as he's a Cardinal. Hmm. This is different from the Texans. The Texans like the Texans loved, love and always will have overused their weapons when Bill O'Brien was there. They mm-hmm. overused their back. This is the opposite of what the Cardinals do. So you're not getting those 150 targets a game uh, a year now. Right. Yeah, I, it, it'll be hard to Well, you're not going to have Christian Kirk there. I was like Chris, sure. Christian Kirk becomes well, he's an unstricted free agent, right? He could get paid. I mean, he could get paid, yeah, but I, I will they keep them? Oh, I don't know. We'll have to wait till March. This is But I do top it off. Kyler doesn't really sling the ball. Like, if you look at the yardage totals for, for DeAndre Hopkins, he didn't break 100 yards once a year. He made it into the 80s twice this year. Like, they're not good. It's a lot of PPR points, and it's it's really nice, but it's it, it was a solid season. But I think this is one of those, like, declines, right? Like, Yeah, I, we're not seeing, like, those. I think we're the not height of this. Texans Hopkins. And that's the problem. That's what really? we want. We want Texans Hopkins, not. 1,000 yards on 70 catches hop. It's true. Maybe you're not seeing those big, like, that big dramatic, uh, you know, Hail Mary that, that, <laughs> yeah, that we, that we again. still see the, we still see the highlights of in commercials and stuff. One of the best highlights. He is a good touchdown candidate every week. And I think that's why I said fourth round. Um, but you know, he's, I would categorize him as like Robert Woods this year. Robert, mm-hmm. Robert Woods would have stuck around and he wasn't injured. I would say that Yamash Dry Hopkins is slightly, uh, Robert Woods of upside, hmm. right? PPR, possible red zone guy, 70 yards, six catches, 80, you know what I mean? Like, and a touchdown, like that's, which is great. Don't get me wrong. That's, that's some fantasy relevancy, but is that second round relevancy? I don't think hmm. so. Debatable. Yeah. Uh, uh, a couple of running backs, Antonio Gibson and Najee, uh, at RB11 oh, and RB12. I love Najee. Uh, he had a bad game, but everybody too, did. Huh? I love I love Gibson too. You know, I forgot playing injury. Yeah, he was relevant. Weirdly enough, he got scripted up by his own team, but he still did well. Just not what we expected. And then, of uh, course, nineteen. Uh, what happened to the chemistry? Uh, DK Metcalf, <laughs> WR six. Oh God. Uh, yeah. What's What's happened to the What's happened to the chemistry? I, I kind of wonder about. I think that. the Seahawks don't believe in the mission anymore. I think they, we We've seen this. We've seen prominent Seahawks guys kind of just give up on this team, and I think DK Metcalf got hit with it early. Yeah, it. Tyler Lockett is kind of the the only guy left on this team that yeah, you want. That you really want, yeah. I guess I guess you're right about that. Uh, Wilson's. Uh, well, they're saying that Wilson will move on. So yeah. Oh, my favorite. Here comes say my next one. Joe, guy. Joe Mixon. Yeah, my Joe Mixon. Goodness sakes, he's he's uh, moving on up. Number twenty. He, ECR twenty. RB thirteen. Wow, boy, did we? I had him in my rankings as ninth overall or tenth overall. Pick. Oh, I am been. I feel so good. About I'm telling you, this he was made- this was the year of the zero RB people. They they definitely. Or if you are zero RB hybrid, at least, or if you you know yeah, RB hero or I would say. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of these guys at RB twos that did well. RB, sorry, the round two guys, they did pretty well. Not one of yeah. them really missed. Yeah. I wouldn't even really even consider Gibson a, a total miss either. No, no, not really. No, no. But yeah. Mixon definitely way moving up. And we will give uh, a little bit later on. We'll give our uh, top twelve just to round uh, to end the show. We will give our top top twelve. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> 
But we just want to we oh. just want to run through a few more of these guys. Uh, Twenty one, Randy Moss. I mean Justin Jefferson, right? Yeah, he's <laughs> uh, yeah he's going up. So good. yeah, he is. You know, he looks like he's invisible on the field the way he moves. Yeah, I, I have no idea how he's always uh, open. He's so good. He's a lot of He is uh, great, and he hasn't suffered with uh, the loss of uh, Adam Thielen either. He's he's still he still manages to uh, haul him in, even though the, the Bears were well tonight's game the Bears. Bears had to double cover him because they had uh, youngsters on, uh, like they had some guys that had never even played a snap this season in the secondary, so they had to double team him. So, but I don't know, Cousins was I mean, so awful. <laughs> my time Cousins is always terrible. We know this. Yeah, I bet you, Kel- Kevin wishes he started uh, Justin Fields now, but I think he wanted the stack to try and. T- he, well, he was so far behind, he had to try and attack. And uh, knowing that the Bears were thin on <clears throat> thin in the secondary this week because of COVID, or actually the I shouldn't say that it's actually the uh, the unspecified virus of unknown origin. <laughs> That's where you're supposed to say it, I think, if you don't want to, like, if you don't want to strike us. <laughs> anyways, uh, anyways, yeah, Justice Jefferson, he, he is awesome. And I, I like, I like the way you put it. He's, he's sort of invisible on the field. He, he does do that. He has that. I like him. Chest open. Yeah. Like, what's going on? He's smooth. He is smooth. He's smoother than, like, fine wine, man. He's good. He is really, really, really good. I had him last year as a rookie and. uh, and I, they were saying, well, why are you drafting him? I said, so, so, well, who's going to – somebody's got to catch the yeah. balls that Diggs isn't getting. Yeah. Who are you going to trust, a tight end on that team? No. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. They don't use a tight end there. Kirk Cousins hasn't thrown to a tight end in a while. Since- it just seemed too obvious. So I had him high, quite high in my rankings in 2020. Um, mm-hmm. Moving right along, A.J. Brown. Uh, I'm down on Brown. Back candidate, you think? Hmm? No. Back candidate next year? No. I don't think so. I don't think he's a bad player, but he's... My target temperature for him is not a high temperature, but not a low temperature either, but not in the middle, just slightly, slightly higher. I mean, my, my target temperature on him is, 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 is not red hot. Let me just put it that way. Would you consider him a fourth rounder next year? Mm, yeah, ish. A lot of these guys will get pushed. There was, there was a lot of good players that were in the fifth and sixth and seventh rounds that are going to move up. Um, and I think AJ Brown is going to be one of those guys that sits in the fourth, fifth rounds. It's going to be really hard to argue not to draft to to, to draft him and not to draft him. yeah i i wasn't actively drafting him this year because I'll, I'll tell you why mainly because because of henry um henry yeah henry is such a presence on that team i had i mean there is space for uh, for aj brown to i mean there always is in an offense like that but Henry's presence on on the Titans is so strong that you kind of feel like uh, Brown is kind of a bit player, and 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 look what Julio did. I mean, Julio came back and he's still his hamstring is is not still quite right yet. Um, AJ Brown is a guy that's just going to exist on injury, I think, for the rest of his life as long as he's in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um, and it sucks because he is talented. He has the sight, the speed, the route run. He kind of has everything. And as you said, Derrick Henry is the main focal point. But I actually don't think that's a bad right. No, the it's not action, a bad thing. But it, Tannehill was amazing. And AJ Brown benefits so well from. He should be doing better. It's kind of like I mean, he and well, he and Metcalf. They're from you know the, 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 these big, big, bulky guys from Ole Miss. You know, and they're. I think we expected too much of AJ Brown, and I think that's why he's a disappointment. Yeah, I think he should be considered more of a Tyler Lockett kind of guy mm. rather than a you know like his counterpart in his heyday, Julio Jones. He's not that. He's no. he's Tyler Lockett. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Onward, uh, Darren Waller was uh, ECR 22 <clears throat> injury. Can't really count him, but even before he was injured, uh, after that big opening week, uh, things just slowly, uh, not not immediately, not dramatically, but gradually Waller was getting phased out. And he wasn't even that good after the Ruggs uh, dismissal. So yeah, The Ruggs dismissal really hurt that Raiders. I think Ruggs could have had an amazing season. He could have had an amazing season. Like could have had an amazing, amazing season. Career. <laughs> we could have had a big step up this year. It would have been nice. I had a lot of rugs on my best ball team. So mm. It just sucks for him. You know, it's a it's a bad mistake. <laughs> Here's an odd ball. <laughs> this one's this is this is gonna be tough. How do you rank Clyde Edwards? Hilaire. 
I think he stays exactly where he's at this year. <laughs> ECR 24. 24. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I suppose so. ECR 24. That would be exactly second round, he wouldn't is. it? Yeah. He's yeah. probably not going to move because we've seen it. We saw him have very good games this year. A good balance between rushing and pass catch. I still think Daryl Williams is a better back, but uh, that's just me. Sure. I I do the the, I, the eye test today. It, it seemed to me that when I mean, Clyde sure, Edwards I mean, was Hilaire was out. When he was out, I got a good look at uh, Daryl Williams, and I saw I saw a guy that fits in this offense. Like I saw a guy that that uh, Patrick Mahomes trusts. I don't think he mm-hmm. trusts Clyde Edwards Hilaire for some reason. I'm just I think it comes down to, honestly. I think it comes down to Andy Reid, and Andy Reid will has done this before, right? When we thought Miles Davis was the guy after Jamal Charles and it became Spencer Ware or it became Trakandrick West. Um, and now we expect, you know, Clyde Edwards Hilaire and it could be Darrell Williams. This is, that would be a total Andy Reid. Yeah, maybe. Um, I, yeah, because Darrell Williams does it all. I mean, he's pretty good. Um, he's Williams, a pretty, he's a pretty right. damn good back. He's better than what I thought. Remember yeah. Damian Williams at the same thing too? He used separate. To- yeah. So who knows? He only played a couple of snaps uh, a game uh, tonight, uh, Damian. Williams. We'll see next season, but we'll I, I don't. I don't disagree with you at all. I don't think that's. Um, I think if I'm drafting next year and I'm in, if I'm in on this running back, Clay Edwards Hilaire, you would be a fool not to grab Darrell Williams. You're, you're giving the chance to be given up the actual starter, especially if it's that close in talent. Uh Keenan Allen WR nine. That's about right. I think that'll stay. I think he moves up. Yeah. He takes he takes the Andre Hopkins spot. He he kicks DK Metcalf down out. He's been good in full PPR. He has not gone under ten points one time this season. Yeah, he's got a good quarterback. And in full PPR, he's only gone under I think fifteen two or three times this season. Mm. He's he's and he's still at that right age for redraft. Maybe not so much in dynasty with a good quarterback, as you just said. You know, which is the thing that we forget that Jess Herbert it can be good. Yeah. You, you have a guy that should be in the second round. Not the first or the third round. He should be a second round. I'll, I'll play this. This is this is a this is a a, a clip from a Sunday Night Football, a recent Sunday Night Football, and this is a, a catch to uh, Keenan Allen, and this is uh, Al Michaels has the call. Uh, oh, I guess we'll well we'll, we'll get that. Uh, just move on to the next guy, and we'll we'll, well get that one before we move off. Then just really quick, mm-hmm. week fifteen. This is week fifteen miss, and this is by the way him also missing a game because of COVID. Ninety two catches on one hundred and thirty four targets. That's really that's already a good ratio with a thousand and seven yards and five touchdowns. We still got three more games to go. Right. That's, I mean, short of injury concerns in the past, which we've seen him get past now. Back to back to back years, yeah, dude. He's uh, he's a wider. He's definitely a borderline second rounder. And oh. I don't I don't think you could argue that. Uh, not you personally, but other people could argue him out. At least in PPR standard, I could I could. See, that's a difference. Okay, we have that clip. Okay. Two hundred yeah. passing yards now for Herbert. Roundtree is the back. Fires over the middle. What an arm, Allen. In a fourteen, he just throws a beautiful ball. He really he really does, Al. And- so, and he does throw a beautiful ball. Uh, and, and that's coming from Al Michaels, who's watched like almost er, more football games than you can shake a stick at. Yeah. And, uh, he doesn't say that often about a guy. I mean, I mean, we can talk about Herbert another day, but, uh, Keenan Allen, he definitely has the right guy. And, uh, and we can talk about Mike Williams and Jalen Guyton. I mean, the, I mean, the, everything's, everything's, and, the, and this Palmer guy who's coming up. Who's actually Keenan Allen's understudy? All these guys, all these guys, you 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 got you're gonna want them for dynasty. You're gonna want them in deep leagues. You know they can step up. They can step up. Well, we just saw it, right? Didn't Jenny guy just step up on week fourteen when uh-huh. Keenan Allen's out? Yep. You know Donald Parham. I mean, you know. Oh, uh, sorry about him. Around, but he was good too. He could have. He could easily take over as the lead tight end in the future. Yeah. Uh, well, hopefully he's okay. He's still he's okay. Him. Concussion, as it's ruled right now, I'm hoping that it is true. But, you know, these guys, this team, this weapon, it's, it's amazing. I think actually the weakest weapon on the team, in my opinion, is Mike Williams because of the way he is kind of inconsistent at time and entry. Yeah. Oh, that's the worst guy. I'm but, okay with that. But I but I do I do have my eye on this Joshua Palmer fellow. Yes. Um, yeah. Definitely definitely keep your eye on him. Uh, let's just – I think we'll just go to the top 30 here because we could keep going on here. Uh, Alan Robinson. Uh, that's um, that's, that's a, to me. 
Dead to me, yep. Uh, dead to me. And actually, Terry McLaurin, uh, bad season this year. Bad season? It's still a- not his fault. I think he, I think he stays the same. Well, he's got a game manager type quarterback. He, 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 like, what if, what would he be like if he had Herbert? <laughs> the talent speaks for itself. I think he stays in the third round this year, mm-hmm. depending on who ends up on this team. If Tyler Huntley somehow ends up on this team next year, so if, if, you know, any random quarterback that isn't terrible ends up on this team next year, mid level guy, I could see uh-huh. Terry McLaurin being okay. I definitely can't move forward with Heineke. Yeah. Um, three more to go before we get to the top 30. Uh, Chris Carson. Uh, sorry. I'm, I'm, I think, sorry I think, I think, I think that ride is, uh, I think that ride's over now. I think uh, we said this about so many Seattle running backs. Yeah. There hasn't been a guy since Marshall. Like, That's right. Uh, David, through, David Montgomery, uh, RB 16. I think he moves up. He started to catch more balls. Uh, he's caught, he caught, uh, Caught quite a few balls from. I don't, I'm not sure how many receptions he got from Fields today, but he was he was catching balls and uh, he was out there. I mean, he's gonna finish under a thousand yards um, rushing. He's gonna finish with less. He only has four touchdowns. I'm. I mean, the 31 catches has been nice, mm-hmm. but I don't think it's enough. Kind of unexpected. In the second rounds. He's. I think him as a third, fourth round guy makes right because you have other guys that where you're probably if we go up to 32. That's going to move ahead of it. All these guys, short of the quarterback, are all going to move past. Them. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Ceedee Lamb, DeAndre Swift. That's easy. It's easy guys. Hmm. Debatable. Okay. Um. Got uh, Ceedee Lamb at uh, number thirty. Wr twelve uh, to start the season. Um. Don't know what to make of uh, Lamb. The, the I think he's great. I think Dak's not that great. CeeDee Lamb is on pace right now, still with 940 yards and six touchdowns with bad QB play. So he's still hitting 1,000 yards. He's still hitting six touchdowns. That's barely less than than what Keenan Allen has done. I would rather have Huntley than Dak. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm t- well, okay, I have recency bias, bias going on here, but Dak hasn't and, you know, really... You know, recovering. This is his one year back off recovery. We've seen this before. Yeah. It happens. I, this is not enough for me. To, this is not enough to scare me off of CeeDee Lamb. Oh no, I'm not talking. It's just who's delivering him the ball, and I think this kind of <clears throat> for his up and down numbers that you're getting from him, uh, you know, it's not that great. You know, I need, uh, where have I got him here? CD Lamb. I, I currently have him rest of season 13, WR 13. I mean, but he, I can't, I can't really call him out for this week because all the. <laughs> Every stud did terrible. Almost I mean, eleven the... points this week, thirteen points last week. You know, sixteen points the week before. Um, a shitty week against Kansas City, but then fifth, you know, a hundred fifteen points and then two touchdowns. I mean, he hasn't had a bad season. He really hasn't. No, it's it's been a bit up and down. He hasn't had a hundred yard game since week eight against the Vikings. So yeah, but you know, that was the Vikings and then New England before that. And then he had that 94 yard and two touchdowns. He's, he's still a guy. He's a, he should be viewed as a PPR type guy with upside, you know, 940 yards, six, six touchdowns. It hasn't still got three more weeks to go. So anyway, I think we'll stop there at the top 30. We could probably, uh, save that for another show about where we're, uh, cause we, I've got, I've got the top 60 list here, but I will put this on the page for, uh, you listeners to, uh, to have a browse just to, to see where they were in back in August and where we are today. So now it's time for our early top N uh, rankings. Like it's it's draft day 2022, <laughs> and uh, you've got the first pick. Um, yeah, no we um, yeah no surprise. We both took Jonathan Taylor, and you know what? Earlier in the season, but a week eight, we would have been saying Derrick Henry. Without question. I mean, the, the guy is, I mean, I think he's still, even though he's been out all these weeks, I just still think he ranks ninth or something like that or eighth. And I think the Titans and the Colts are the exact same. They're the exact same. <laughs> Uh, but you know, you know what I liked about Taylor a little bit more. I, he's got a little bit more. Well, I mean, for fantasy, I'm talking about like Derrick Henry is good for. Jonathan Taylor is a lot more dy- dynamics in in the in the pass catching area. I'm actually going to say it's about the same. My mm-hmm. major difference here is that Taylor has a better O line. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. But uh, but you can say that also looking at how Dante Foreman 
can get two 100 yard games and just been on the team like about five minutes can tell you really how good the offensive line that Derrick Henry has to work with. Sure. I'm not I'm not saying that Derrick Henry is good because of the offensive line. He is he is miles ahead of uh, Dante Foreman, but but I, it's I'm just trying to make some justification of why uh, we have Jonathan Taylor ahead of Derrick Henry. When you know, he also half this passes. Season. Yeah, he catches more passes, and uh, you know, he, so. and he's been good. It's as simple as that. He's just been good. And Derrick Henry is our number. Well, we're gonna go to him in a second, but he has a Jones fracture, which is kind of a problem. Those are hard to get over. Mm. Yeah, that's true. That's something to forget about. Is is that uh, is that Jones? It's fracture. a recurring injury. And so you can have to start to look at. I mean, it used to be that Derrick Henry would be oh, like this time of the year. Your fantasy playoffs, Derrick Henry would be the man like he was last year, right? We kind of, you know, he's the guy that carried you there to the to the playoffs. I had him last year and he was fantastic. He took me to a fantasy final, didn't win it because they went up against Green Bay and Derrick Henry terrible, but, but that was last year. This is that was then. This is now. But um, yeah, and I think he's number two also because I think a little bit of the tread is starting to wear because of that injury now. Running backs have such tough jobs, don't they, Davis? No, I, I, I'm with you on this. Um, I ranked him as two. Derrick Henry's a guy I've always ranked in the top four. Um, he lacks on PPR. Mm. In you know, in half PPR, he gets a little bit more balanced out. Uh, but he lacks in some categories. That's that's fine. But he can bust one, like Jonathan Taylor just did against the Patriots. He can always bust a huge run. You know, 34 carries later, he's still the same strength he was at the first carry, if not better. He's a very Bowser-like guy. He just he just runs downhill and just tramples players. And I mean, this year specifically, and the guys that I've ranked lower when we get down there, um, they're these guys are smaller and they're getting injured and they're not they're not playing 16 games or 17 games each year. No, so they're I think not. Derek Henry has this. That's why he has that advantage. And I said this earlier before in the past, and even in our six pack chat, I'm, you know, some guys I just go. He needs to be in a committee. This this guy needs to be in a committee. He's not going to survive this. Yeah. Henry's not one of those guys. He can survive, you know, given a Jones fracture. But I think he could survive 17 weeks. I don't think most other running backs know. So that's why I put, I put him so high. Uh, we both have Dalvin Cook at three. I don't think there's any surprise there. I think Dalvin will be fine. Um, he's one of the guys I, I just referenced, the guy I don't think that can survive 17. You know, he needs to lighten up his load a little bit. He's dynamic, all-around, all-purpose running back. He needs to start getting his touches cut down. I didn't see his stats. He didn't score a touchdown uh, tonight, uh, but he uh, he was still definitely amazing. the bell cow. Yeah, he still he still uh, picked up a. I'm not sure if he reached 100 yards. I don't think he did. Yeah, I don't think he did today either. Not even from scrimmage. No. No, no actually, uh, I think he did from scrimmage. I think he just hit 100. Just he hit 89 100. rushing. And I'll find out the last stat, which is looks like 17. No, it looks like 11. I think I, I can't find the receptions, but he did get 89 rushing. And he had two receptions. Uh, here's where we start to divert. Um, I say Cooper Cup at number four, and you say Austin Eckler at number four. Um, I will, I don't disagree with your idea of Austin Eckler at number four. I, I could easily put him, I mean, because he's number five for me, but, uh, no, I, I don't disagree with Austin Eckler at, at, at uh, four for you. He's definitely risen up the ranks, and, uh, wow. A, li- a little injury prone, but, uh, you know, but like you say, he's got a, he's got a bit of committee help there. That is that doesn't intrude on his production. Yeah, I, I I'm a little worried at times with him, but he's one of the few running backs who I trust to get touchdowns in more ways than one. Right? He's not just a runner. He's not just a receiver. He can do either. Like it wouldn't surprise me if he's a guy guy goes eight and eight for touchdown, eight rushing, eight, eight receiving. Yeah. Right. Like would that would that surprise you? Like I would surprise no. me if Derrick Henry did it. Would not surprise me if Austin Eckler did it. You know what I mean? Like he has that very Aaron Jones esque. I can score. Any way I want. And yeah, he's, and he's very much in the scheme. He is. He's the. He's very much a. Uh, he, he's. Uh, there was another guy too that he reminds me of as well. Uh, and I was uh, thinking about this as well about what about the um, not so much the kind of player he is, but his function within the Chargers. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of reminds me of someone else, and the, the name escapes me at the time. Yeah, what do you What do you um, think? At, what do you think of Cooper Cup at four? I think it's too early. Um, I, as much as I love Cooper Cup, and shout out to Steve Smith. Always, I always bring this up any chance I get the chance to. Steve Smith said he was the best receiver in his draft class. Everybody blasted him. Look where we're at today, right? Like, look where we're at now. Yeah. He was the best receiver in his draft class. He's the best receiver in fantasy right now. God, he's so good. Had the best player comps. I think at four. 
I could see this, but I, I don't like wide receivers that are their first time breaking into the first round. Um, you know, the the first time finishing as a one scares me. Like it's, it's like a wide receiver one that always scares me. And then also just Cooper Cup as it has had. He's kind of reminds me of kind of like Keenan Allen in the sense that he suffers the most ridiculous injuries each year. Um, I think he's had. Uh, I don't know if he's had. To, uh, I think he's had an issue last year. Um, this seems to uh, be okay this year. Was it a Cooper stinger? Cup has never or started all 16 games um besides i think one season i mean never i, I mean short of i think like i think one season um 2017 he started six games uh but that's his rookie year 2018 he only played eight games 2019 he started 14 games and that's his other big year with 10 touchdowns 11 yards 2020 he had 12 games started out of 15 games played finished under a thousand yards and only had three touched do i think he's amazing i like i think he um hit the ceiling this year can repeat i'm not gonna say he can't but he scares me a little bit like especially at four mm. yeah I, 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 again this is this is purely uh a lot there's a lot of recency in this and this is probably gonna not gonna it's kind of nice to have this down so that i can look at it uh come august 2022 to see where it uh, falls but I, um, I, I do agree with you though that there are more receivers that are going to be in the first round this year, next yes. year, than there, I think there's ever going to be. I think we're actually, I predict just as much like you, we're going to have three receivers in the first round. Next. Yeah. I think, uh, I think the zero RB people are getting, are getting some influence finally. Th this is, this is not going to be 11 running backs, one receiver next. I but you know, if we go that way and the next year, you know, it, it changes again. I don't know. I mean, with, with guys getting split, it wouldn't surprise me. But I think it's, the, I think what it is, Davis, is that we're, we're kind of a little, getting a little bit concerned about, um, it's, it's kind of like what you were saying about, uh, Derek Henry needing a, a, a bit of a committee a little bit. Well, uh, more so I was saying for like Dalvin Cook, but yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, Jonathan uh, Taylor works well on a committee. Look at him. Yeah. Or Christian McCaffrey needs a little bit of a committee. CMC needs a committee for sure. Otherwise you're going to lose him for, for good. I mean, he's, he's overworked, but the thing is with him, he, he's already come out and said he loves the work. He's a bit nuts. <laughs> <laughs> the West Welker of running backs just taking hits all day. Uh, just taking hits all day. And can't, they, I mean, this is the thing is, so you, you go in the concussion protocol and you, it, it upsets your fantasy team because you've got to make alterations for these, for these short term injuries. I mean, okay, he's, oh, and then he's questionable. And then he's, and, and then it's a, oh, he's questionable, but he doesn't play until Monday night football. So what do you do? Yeah. You know, and he, these kind of things you just don't need. For players but anyway let's move on uh we're getting the show's getting away from us so anyways i have austin eckler at five whereas you have him at four and but you have nick chubb and i don't mind that i think nick chubb at five is absolutely fine i have him at five this season too i think five or six this year also all right um he's just good he, yeah the team is dependent upon him you can call him derrick henry light you know but and he, he can break him he, breaks, he broke one today that's right. He's at a thousand yards already with seven rushing touchdowns. He's, you know, durable for the most part. Hasn't really missed a ton of games. He's already in a committee that's fine that works for him. Yep. He outperformed yeah. people who thought that he wasn't a first rounder. You know, oh, you know, I, I have Aaron Jones in the first round. I have all these other guys. None of these guys are doing better than him, nope. especially with how scarce running back. I think Nick Chubb deserves to be where he is ranked for me. I He's got a nice team. little, yeah. And, uh, and the other guys are perfectly good plugs. Like you know, Kareem Hunt and Durnest. Yeah. So, uh, so, but yeah, I have eight touchdowns on the season. Right now. So, anyways, because of my interruption of Cup, I, Nick Chubb falls down to six for me, and you have Deontay Devonte Adams. I know, but you also put in brackets dependent. What Did is? Uh, what do you mean by that? If Devontae Adams splits away from Aaron Rodgers, I don't think he will do what he's doing right now. I think you're exactly right. <laughs> because but of Greg, because of Greg Jennings team. and Jordy Nelson, right? No, not just that, because we've seen Devontae Adams perform with the backup score. It's just that Aaron Rodgers just is that good with, well, I mean, just that good. And then you have a top tier, team, right? Um, Aaron Rodgers is a great quarterback, Hall of Famer, right? We're watching a living legend, right? Right now. Yeah. And losing that, no matter how good of a receiver you are, you know, leaving the scheme that depends on you, right? Yep. Devontae Adams is gonna, says he wants to leave Green Bay. Mm. Darren Rodgers wants to leave Bay. Unless they leave together, you know, if Devontae Adams ends up with Derek Carr next year, how excited are you? I'm not. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, at best we get big, a Michael Crabtree. Big downgrade. <laughs> Anybody who goes to the Raiders gets a big downgrade. 
Well, I mean, Michael Crabtree and Amari Cooper had DC. Michael Crabtree okay. like, had eight touchdowns or ten touchdowns and like a thousand yards. That's great. That's not six overall pick good though, and that's why it's dependent. So unless they end up on the same team together, or or maybe they back out and they end up being on Green Bay again, it's dependent. But Devontae Adams has already made a point in fantasy that he is a first round pick every year, as long as the way things are today. Yeah, they are. As long as they are, that is. As long as they are, he's a first round pick. Yeah, because and I'm not the biggest Adams guy, but he has proven it time and time again. He's a first rounder. But I, uh, but uh, the thing is, is though, if uh, uh, but you, it's you've got to you've got to take into account those once you break chemistry, the history of breaking chemistry with Aaron Rodgers, Greg Jennings, what happened <laughs> after James Jones, James Jones, Randall Cobb. Uh, Randall Cobb. Well, he Randall Cobb. Well, was old when he left. It was, most of those guys were in their thirties when they left. Yeah. Besides Randall Cobb. Yeah. It was oh, I'm not sure how old Jordy Nelson was, but I think Jordy Nelson was like thirty two, coming off like an ACL to end up on yeah. the Raiders. Uh, yeah, that's right. But but the, but there also is that I think once you lose chemistry with Rodgers, I think there is a downgrade anyway. But yeah. True. Yeah. I mean, you're playing for a Hall of Famer. I mean, quite, yeah. I would hope you go down, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Devontae Adams goes to a, a low end team. Anyways, uh, starting to diverge a little bit more. Um. I I guess I kind of show my little bit of a fandom. I don't own Debo, but I I am envious of people who do. He's my number seven. Ah. I, I agree with you. I love Debo. I know he's not in my rank, but he's one of my favorite receivers currently in the league. I have a, I have a man crush on him. He's good. Mm. He's six foot flat or five foot eleven, but he plays like he's six five. He, he hit a guy so hard his mouth guard fell out of his mouth to, on the, this last Sunday. He's a gadget player that's actually a good gadget player. Most gadget players suck. The guy's amazing. I just don't have him in my first round because it's, he's injury prone. He's a guy that I don't think can finish the season. I'm scared. Oh, okay. And I love him. That's fair. That's I fair. Him. I have him in. I have him at number seven because I, he'll be fine. He's he's he's, he's, next he's a year, great he's a great. I'm, I'm happy for you. <laughs> I hope I hope he does well. I, I really do. I think he's amazing. Yeah, of course. I'm From his rookie changed. year, I knew this guy was gonna be a special talent. You know, the best ability is availability, right? It scares me about him. That's what Lavisca Chenault should be. Lavisca <laughs> Chenault. Lavisca Chenault is so wasted on the Jaguars. He would be. He is a good. Mm-hmm. Lavisca Chenault is good. And you know what? He's he's on a bad football team, and and he would be like Debo Samuel if he he would be. I'm saying, I'm just saying. Oh, no. The eye I'm test never Chanel. lies. <laughs> I find Lavisca Chanel to be approximately the same talent level as Jarvis, which is great. You know, uh, a gadget ish player, very good for the team. I think he needs a scheme that has him in mind correctly. Um, a 1B, 2A kind of guy. I think that's what he's meant to be. I don't think he's any better than a Jarvis Landry, which I love Jarvis. I'm a, as a big Dol- as a Dolphins fan, I, I, I miss him. But And I think that's where LaVisca lives. Debo plays. Debo's just so explosive. He's tough. He's he scary, is tough. Man. He is he, tough. He, he is so good. Uh, I, I, I'd have a, I, Henry at six five. Five, I, th- th- Henry that's like probably you. why I haven't rated so high because people who own Debo, are t- I'm just so envious of them that they have this guy that I want. <laughs> oh, good. I know. I, I don't feel the same way about Chanel. I feel like Chanel is Jarvis and Driet. I ah, Debo Burnett. light at the moment. But. Yeah. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's, I'll, I'll, I'll see him at Jarvis Landry right now. Potential. I think Jarvis Landry is still a better play right now, but it's just a potential. Mm. Because Jarvis Landry is a gadget player and people kind of forget that, right? Jarvis Landry's thrown touchdowns. Jarvis Landry has rushed the ball in for all that kind of stuff. We'll see though. But this guy's still young. Well, we better move this along. Um, Sorry about we that. have at, uh, well, you've got Najee up at seven. I like Najee. I think uh, definitely uh, he's definitely first round worthy now. He's proved it. I, I was drafting him at twelve every this year. I was drafting him at twelve, thirteen this year. I, I he was. Uh, I drafted him at. I drafted Probably. him. Uh, I was. I had the sixth pick, and he was my first pick. I picked him. I picked him off. I thought I. I'm. I'm not having this. I'm not having this uh, guy go somewhere else. Who's who owns the Pittsburgh backfield? I know what. I know what happens to uh, top running backs that own the Pit- <laughs> Pittsburgh backfield. I mean, I've seen worse talent do well. I've seen 30 year old D'Angelo Williams do well. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, come on, give me Najee Harris. Yeah. With the battle line. Okay. With yeah, I like Najee at, uh, I like Najee, your, your pick of Najee at, uh... that's, that's one of the few teams that's going to have a three down back as long as that franchise is. Yeah. As long as the head coach is there 
right now. Um, they're gonna be a three down back. They've never had a second back since um, Tom's been there. They never, since since their head coach has been there, they've never had a second down. They ever had a, never had two running backs that were consistent. He's pretty durable. Yeah. He's pretty durable. He's young. I will say though, there's gonna be a time where that cliff hits fast because Najee Harris has, I think, the touch record from Alabama, which says a lot. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, you kind of forget about the hits. They t- they take a lot of hits in college, too. So, and in high school and in yeah, middle school and yeah, so on and so forth. Yeah. Let's move on to number eight. Uh, I have uh, Joe Mixon. That was my number eight. And you have Christian McCaffrey. Uh, I have to say. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, that's a risky <laughs> pick. It's a risky pick the way. I mean, you can't. And, and I get it. You can't take the window of, you know. December 2021 and and move it to August 2022. I I get that, but I Where are we going to be at with Christian McCaffrey in August? I hard to say. I mean, you could be right there. You could be right and you could be saying like, look, that's past, the past is past, and he'll he'll have Chuba Hubbard there, who's a rookie this year, as sort of like as, as sort of like a mini committee. Whether Christian McCaffrey likes it or not, they're going to have to do it to preserve him a little bit better. I mean, because yeah. I mean they've ridden the wheels practically off, nearly off him these past two seasons. I mean, well, he's ridden the, the uh, wheels off himself because he kind of insists on owning the backfield. You know, know. Um, for me, it's a little bit everything. I'm hoping that they put him down at 20 carries, 20 touches a game, right? He's 25, turning 26. Not this old guy out there. Look, we've seen guys older than him with more touches. Sean McCoy, for God's sake, right? Um, yeah, true. He's a, dual, he's a dual threat back, 26 years old in June next year. They're going, they, they have to at some point lower his touch kids from 25 to 35 to 20, 15, 20. But here's the thing about Christian McCaffrey. He doesn't need 30 touches like he's been getting. Every time he's been on the field, that guy has been a double digit monster. He was basically, I think he still holds like the best fantasy points ever. You know, yeah. from his ever, he's basically a quarterback. Um, yeah. So I, at pick eight, if I had to pick between him and some of these other guys, besides maybe this guy after him, um, but like Joe Mixon, but we've seen the cap on that. We also don't know if they finish season, so it does scare me, right? Like it, Al, like Alvin Kamara, all these other guys, we don't know what they're gonna do. We don't know what Zeke's gonna do, but we know that Christian McCaffrey is 26 years old, a dual threat back, can go 10 for 10 touchdowns, both as rushing or receiving. Which whatever he wants to end up at, and the, and the talent's there. You don't finish as well as you do per game on a per game basis as like he does. I don't think any running back, any running back, short of JT right now, will do that. They got to get Newton out of there. Yeah, they, people need to stop taking Newton on any team. They just need to stop it. <laughs> they just need to. He, he's done. He's done. I mean, no more, he's no more he, look trap at Cam next, please. For one thing, he, he before Christian McCaffrey uh, left the stage this year. I mean, Newton was you know. He was vulturing everything, you know. Cam Newton is this generation's Sam Bradford. <laughs> somehow, in the Ooh, league, that's pretty bad. <laughs> somehow getting paid. Sam Bradford's like one of the most ridiculous guys to ever get paid and get cost people first round pick. Yeah. People forget that he costed the Vikings a first round pick. I think he costed the Cardinals a pick too. And I think he costed the Eagles a pick too. <laughs> yeah. That's what Cam Newton is. He's Sam Bradford. Got, He's a guy that's injured. Got a kid. Ends up on a bunch of teams. Why? Why are we paying him? Yeah, well, uh, Belichick never makes a bad move. He he made a good move. Like, let, we got to get this guy out of here so we can he so I can work on my true. project here without without this without this interference. They paid Cam a million dollars last, and they didn't get their money's worth. No. So <laughs> let's let's move on from him. We need to stop Cam. You know, he's an MVP. Great. I'm happy for him. Made it to the Super Bowl. You know, happy for the guy. Great personality for the most part. Happy for the guy, but I'm sorry, man. Your, your time is done. You're Sam Bradford now. Stop it. <laughs> That's it. Okay, so where are we moving on to now? Number nine. We are moving to you number got nine. It. Uh, when you, uh, I'm busy. I'm busy looking at something. Why don't you? <laughs> why don't oh, you take? Sorry. Me? So you, Richard, you have Alvin Kamara at number nine. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I think it's an okay pick, but I think what we saw this past Sunday, these last past Sundays, you know, a guy that just can't handle tackles. And he was so much better with marking. He is so much better for Davis. This is a guy that needs to be in a committee. Anything less than a committee scares me. He cannot take the hits. He's not built for it. He's missed games every year. We're always scared. He's a decoy. It's, he only catches passes mainly. It's kind of a weird situation, right? This is a Sean Payton running back. Yeah. Is he, I'm okay with that. I, I think that's fair. 
I, I rank him out of the, the first round, and I think he's a high second round. Mm, mm, okay. Uh, but the names we have at this point, though, it's like, it's tough. It is tough. Joe Mixon ahead of him, and I agree with you. On, it's there for a reason. Yeah, uh, Joe Mixon uh, definitely had a, had a step up. He's definitely, uh, it, he works well. Um, <clears throat> you know, he works well with the new system. You know, Burrow is, um, it. I like I like how the I like what the Bengals are doing with their their offense. They're very um, they're, they're very. I find them Burrow and uh, Burrow and Herbert are kind of like their 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 weapons are very similar. They got very similar weaponry. I, I find them. I, in fact, I was very very fascinated that they were playing each other in a game this year. Just to see, because of, because their offenses are so similar, you know, they got the big, uh, downfielders and they got, uh, and, you know, and they got, uh, and they got like Joe Mixon and Austin. It's, it's almost carbon copy, you know, they got, wow, well, except, well, I guess you could say, cause Uzuma is not, Uzuma is Jared Cook, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> True, true. That's so, exactly what he is. And I love Uzuma. I, I brought him up on our chat a few times. Brought him up on our draft show when we did the early season. And I was like, I'm just, you know, he has an appeal about him that it's just like, he's going to get a touchdown somewhere. <laughs> he's Jared uh, Cook, right? He's going to get it somewhere. I like, I like his uh, voice. I don't know. I can't do his yeah, voice. He just, but uh, He said, have you ever heard him talk? He's like, you ever heard Jared Cook talk? You should try to listen to a clip of Jared Cook uh, in an interview or something. And he's, he's, he's just like the days. perfect, he's got the perfect voice for something for, I don't know, cartoons or something like that. Like, like as a, the big bulky guy, the, the, the big blizzard. bulky guy, you know, he's, 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 he's got the, uh, it's, ah, uh, it's, it's just perfect for commercial. He should be doing commercials or something. I don't know. He's got the great voice. Go on YouTube and look for an interview of, of Jared Cook and listen to his voice. He's got a good one. One. I'll catch you after this. I'll definitely work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, you have Cooper Cup uh, at number nine, which is, uh, yeah, okay. All right. Uh, and I finally hit. Uh, on what he could do. Uh, yeah. I didn't. I really think he can, but you know, we've seen these receivers that come in and for one year then vanish, right? It's tough. Yeah, it I mean, Tyree Hill has had a multiple great season. I think the touchdown upside for Cooper Cup swings in that direction for me. All around has more of a game than most receivers do. Can yeah. play slot, play wide out, beats pressures, beats man coverage, beats zone coverage, a great player. So I'm going to take a chance on him next year in the first round if he comes to me. Um, but I'm not fully invested in it that he should be wide receiver. Mm. Not yet, at least. Not. So Devonta Adams and Aaron Rodgers leave Green Bay. Definitely putting Megatron like numbers up this year. Um, which stands to reason since Matthew Stafford's his quarterback. Uh, <laughs> Good point. Good point. Um, so, uh, uh, and I have Christian McCaffrey at number 10. Similar kind of feelings about it. But yeah, it brings us back to the. I just get angry when I start thinking about Cam. <laughs> get him off the Panthers. <laughs> He's not going to be there next year. We know Cam's not going to be there. Oh. They're going to try Sam Darnold one more time, I think. They did extend him already. No! I mean, they didn't extend him fully. They took the extra year on him, I think. Yeah. So we get one more year, Sam Darnold. We'll see where that goes. But Christian McCaffrey's the man. I think he's the guy. Okay. Uh, you also have Mixon at 10. We've discussed about his and uh, sang, sung his praises. Uh, we both have Javante Williams at number 11. You know what? I could put, I could easily put him higher. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I could easily put him higher, if, you know, uh, as, see, as the season goes for on. Me, this is where I cap him out at. And it's not because I don't think he's a talent. It's because he's on the team that will, that will screw him over a little, right? This is the, this is the committee you're a little bit afraid of, right? How people are afraid of Cream Hunt. Javante Williams will be in a committee where you're afraid, right? Philip Lindsay had, Michael, Melvin Gordon had Philip Lindsay. Um, no, Sean Moreno had, uh, Monty Ball. Monty Ball had, I think, Royce Freeman, right? And, or yeah. Devontae Booker or, or something. These guys that always exist. What a memory. Like, Monte Ball. I mean, goodness sakes. <laughs> he wasn't that good, to be honest, but he. No, he, he wasn't, but I mean, that was a, a, I mean, he had his, he had his moments, but that's, uh, Yeah, but there's always that guy that's sucking a little bit about it, right? Melvin yeah, Gordon Philip Lindsay, right? Melvin Gordon now has Javante Williams, right? Like, there's always that guy. And well, yeah, Marcus that's true. Running two running backs. They've been doing it for a while. Yeah, um, but you're right. So Melvin Gordon does that. take the oxygen out of the room. I mean, if anything, Javante Williams takes it from Melvin Gordon, if you how you want to look at that way. Melvin I Gordon guess, had yeah, it's, it's either Melvin Gordon's playing how great. How you want to look at it? Yeah. This is picturesque Denver Bronco football. Yeah, 
right? I mean, CJ Anderson had a guy stealing punches. Right? Like, like, there was always somebody, always just kind of ruining your week from, from like loving the Broncos running back. And they had some good ones. CJ Anderson, people give him crap, but he actually was a decent back. Could catch the balls at the yard of scrimmage. He's basically like a better Mike Davis that was not terrible, but was good. And there's always that guy on this team. Javante Williams is going to have somebody next year that's going to steal 600 yards from scrimmage and like five touches. And you're going to go, God damn it. <laughs> right? Like, cause that's hurt. 600 yards and five missing TDs. A lot of points to like, give up to some guy. The funny thing is, is I had to put him at 11 because I'm afraid of not, not putting him in a, I mean, if I'm at the 11th and Javante Williams is sitting there, I, I kind of don't want anybody else to have him. And I agree with you there. That's exactly why I have him there too. Um, it's more like I, I need to grab him in the first round, but like, cause I probably won't see him at pick 13. I won't see him at pick 14 right now. Like, cause let's say you put Zeke there and you pick Zeke up. Then someone's gonna steal Javante Williams right right away. So I think Javante Williams fits there because he's younger, has a lot, you know, a lot going for him. Behind an okay O line, the quarterback play scares me. But if Aaron Rodgers ends up there, even better. But wow, I'm just scared that somebody steals from him, just like how he's stealing from somebody else this year and and before that, right? Philip Lindsay stole from Melvin Gordon last year. Someone stole from Philip Lindsay the year before that. I think it was Royce Freeman or Devontae Booker. Somebody's always stealing from each other in the in the Denver Broncos. Is is uh, is Denver that one Broncos. of the places too that that Russell Wilson is eyeing? Yes, I think he's also Denver. He wouldn't be bad there. He wouldn't be. He would have a he'd be the first running back that was good on this team in a while. So, I mean, it's been a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that's what Javante Williams is about. I think the talent's there. I think a lot of stuff is in the right place. But it's the committee side that we as fantasy managers are scared of, right? So, yeah. Yes, you should be in a committee to, like, loosen up a little bit. And then you go, too much, too much. <laughs> right? He got too many touches. Now I'm screwed. So that's the Denver Broncos. We definitely, he's definitely a, a topical player for coming into 2022. No doubt about it. And we're going to be talking about him. Uh, well, all these players, but. In in their he's degree, doing great. he's uh four point eight yards per carry on the season. You no know, good, three touchdowns on the ground and thirty eight receptions. You know the Denver Broncos know how to use the running. But I mean, the last guy that ever had a full workload by himself was No. Sean Murray. That was uh, good old, many, wasn't it? No that was the Murray. last running back. Yeah, he went to Miami. You're uh, and he went to Miami, did well for a team. little while, and then towards ACL never came back, which sucks. Because Miami does that to older running backs. Speaking of No. Sean, do you do you remember the tears video? The the uh, I love that video. The, the anthem video <laughs> that was amazing during the anthem. oh it was beautiful i've never seen anybody cry well i've never seen you i've never seen anybody cry like a river of <laughs> tears it was just it was it's it was, what a wonderful guy i always thought about that i've never forgotten it's a that. Meme, but it's a good one yeah it's a it's great a one he was a guy that got a lot of hate you know had the nickname no show moreno and you know was a, considered a bus and then had that mm-hmm. one crazy year got made a little money on it but he proved to everybody that he could be good. Just wasn't healthy. Wasn't healthy a lot. Had a personal issues going on. But he had a, that year, by the way, I think it was a, almost a 1600 yard season and he had 13 touchdowns with Peyton Manning. That is absolutely disgusting. He cost yeah. him nothing. Anyways, enough, enough history on fantasy, but yeah. Well, we, we, when you start talking about him, we start talking about Julius Thomas, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so Dante Williams will have a friend that may make you make you hate your life. All right, finally, let's round it out, and then we'll talk about our alternates. Is uh, I have finally have Najee Harris. Obviously, I have him too low. No, 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 no. I well, I just I just threw this together, and I said, so "Oh, you damn! I forgot to put in Najee." <laughs> so I mean, put him in number twelve. But I, I I guess it stands to reason because you know if I if I've forgotten about Najee, it must mean that I don't think even though he's on my fantasy team. <laughs> I kind of forgot about him, but I like Najee. I could put him higher. I have him at 12, and I think that is a bit, I think, uh, I think you have him probably in a more correct, uh, area, which is you have him at seven. I've got him at 12, but you know, I mean, time will tell. Pick seven, pick six to 12, I think is a, t- the first five, I think are the hardest to really nail down correctly. And six through 12, who knows? Huh. I mean, Le'Veon Bell was a top 12 pick when he was on the Jets, right? Who knows at this point? <laughs> yeah. So. And, uh, of course, uh, we we spread a lot of love about Justin Jefferson. He's just fantastic, great guy. He makes my twelve. Yeah, he makes he, your twelve. It's not a fluke, guy. I I, I will say it's not a fluke. We went. I'm, I'm no longer. You know, two years back to back. You can argue, sure, AJ Brown did, but AJ Brown never did like Justin Jefferson. AJ Justin Jefferson isn't starting week one with a hamstring issue. Justin Jefferson has a good enough quarterback, right? Not an amazing quarterback, but a good enough one. 
has a good enough run game to get him distracted and everything is in the right direction for this player uh-huh. he's, he's setting records he's this kid is probably going to be in talks of hall of fame by year five he keeps yeah yeah he's uh, uh he's he's definitely uh he's he's starting off i mean just like a saw I mean, it's just only his second year and he he's going to be 23 <sighs> next that's it and the reason that he even made my list is after when I saw yours, I was like, I forgot. Justin Jefferson. He's He should be a top 12 pick or close to. This is the next year we might have two or three receivers getting drafted the first round. You know, I mean, this year it was the same way. Devonta Adams, Diggs, and then uh, Tyree Hill. But we might have that again. Mm. And uh, nice. yeah, and and I think I think you're right. I think next year the the I think the remember how we used to be like about wow we want that three down running back. Well, that three down running back looks a bit you Why know don't exist anymore. Well, they don't. And, well, I'm talking about bell cow type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying, I'm saying they don't really exist like they used. They don't no, no. Them. I'm saying to that put it this way, of... Justin Jefferson has already outperformed his last season, and he's only at week 15. He just beat it today. The two extra touchdowns and one extra reception, minus yardage a little bit, but those two touchdowns make up for. He outperformed himself. Right? He only got 15 weeks. Yeah, he scored. He scored today, so he was good. He was decent, but he wasn't great. But, but well, it wasn't his fault. It was the script was kind of it was the Bears. Well, what I'm saying of... is he beat his last year season points today. Yeah, on. yeah. Uh, no, no, no. That's good. And there's uh only one and one game. Yeah, we're gonna have some asterisks going on here. Um, I'm not sure how many targets Cooper Cup got, but. Yeah, I don't know if he can beat Marvin Harrison. Can he, is he still on track to? Can he catch Marvin Harrison in seventeen games? Well, I haven't checked that yet, but I won't. I won't. I don't know. Probably not. I would assume Marvin Harrison probably has some ridiculous record because he plays he's got a hundred. Marvin Harrison holds the record for receptions for one hundred and forty-three. And coming into this week, Chris McCaffrey had one hundred and thirteen. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. I think he'll get close. Um, you know, you're looking at three weeks, week fifteen, sixteen. So actually. You might. You got four games. What did he get? What did he get? How many receptions this week? He didn't get any yet. He plays tomorrow. Oh, pardon me. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> he got four <laughs> more games to go if he plays up to week 18. So he could. Actually. So he could get that he asterisk. Because, uh, well, because yeah. uh, Marvin Harrison, of course, did it in 16 games. So if he gets it by week 17, that would be his six, 16 weeks. So his 16 game. Yeah. If he gets it in week 17, then you can ask him. Oh, pardon me. Pardon me. Week 18, I'm thinking. Yeah. So if he gets it by week 17, that'll be his 16 game. Yeah. So he has a chance to do it if he gets 10 more catches per game, which is very possible for Cooper Cup. I mean, yeah. 10 catches per game puts him at ties it. He gets 11, one of those games. He wins and takes that um, the title. I mean, that uh, you saw, I, I don't know who's next under it. The next guy below uh, Marvin Harrison is way down. So it's going to – Marvin Harrison said uh, oh, he was he was awesome. You got to play with the, the sheriff, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, let's look at our alternates here. Uh, I have Devontae Adams. Uh, well, actually – Michael Thomas beat Marvin Harrison's record. Who? Michael Thomas. He beat it in 2019, actually. Did he? He had 149 receptions. Oh, my bad. Still a good record to beat, by the way, if you beat Marvin Harrison, right? This this is the crowd that's in this reception. Michael Thomas at 149, Marvin Harrison at 143, Antonio Brown at 136, Julio Jones at 136, and then Antonio Brown at 139. But you get to say you did better than Julio Jones, Antonio Brown, or Marvin Harrison? That's still good company. All right, it is. Good company. I I I I I, I, I forgot that uh, Michael Thomas or or didn't yeah, we know. forget right? It's a little weird. To top it off though, Marvin Harrison did when he was thirty in two thousand two. So it took seventeen years for this record to get broken in today's league, the Super Bowl era, where people throw every chance they get. Uh-huh. More impressive than Marvin Harrison did it. Yeah, I guess you can look at it that way. But thanks for correcting me on that because uh, I thought it was. To be honest, I thought you were correct too, and I come, and I just happened to be looking at it just to make sure how many more how many more yards that because I went to see who was second or third place, and um, yeah, I was surprised. I was actually a little surprised myself. Mm. Uh, alternates. Uh, I have Devontae Adams, probably for the same reason you say, because we don't know where, what, uh, what situation. 100% agree with you. Uh, my other alternate is Justin Jefferson. Pick, by the <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Justin Jefferson, uh, of course, we've discussed him. Uh, Travis Kelsey, always uh, an alternate. If you, uh, I'm not one for drafting a tight end in the first round, but you know what? Um, I have Travis Kelsey in my, as my alternate because <laughs> for, for this week, I mean, it really showed me about how smart I was in drafting Mark Andrews. I mean, I know, I mean, Travis Kelsey's slightly better. Well, I, oh, well, I mean, if I looked at the stats, Mark Andrews actually has the most fantasy points this year because, uh, he has more fantasy points, uh, total than, than Travis Kelsey. So 
So uh, I think the uh, argument for Travis Kelsey being an alternate is fine. I mean, yep. tight end one for since forever now, since what 2015. Mm-hmm. I, I think if Travis Kelsey would have played his rookie year, that that narrative that rookies suck at tight end might not exist because his first year was his sophomore year that he actually started playing, and he was already like I think 800 yards or something. His second, his first actual starting because he took he took no snaps I think in his rookie year. It's right? because so, the t- I think we forget that the tight end. I think uh, I mentioned this with. Dennis last because at the tight end is such a complicated position. Um, and it's, it's, it's a position that they, that coaches are still figuring out to this day how to use it correctly. Blocking schemes and uh, yeah, in fact, uh, there was a there was a time in believe it or not back in the day uh, when the run and shoot offense was going. There was no t- they had no tight ends. They would just have four. You know, they would just uh, take out the tight end and have a wide receiver. This was back in the day. It was Warren Moon. You know, and uh, I don't. I don't know. It could come back. Um, I, if, uh, I don't know. Will change. I think. Yeah. I think sometimes you, that you see the run mm-hmm. and shoot, but no, not as a not as the main uh, force. They'll they'll take. But uh, but some teams like they have three tight end sets. You know, like what? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but Travis Kelsey, no problem. If you want to take Travis Kelsey in the first round, I always kind of think of it's a bit, a bit of a hard route to take the top tight end in your first round. But, uh, but if you're near the end of the turn, uh, you could probably take him. But, uh, yeah. I, I, and I think that's the perfect play there. I mean, if you pick like 12, you can obviously, who cares? If you pick 11, you could just get, you know, you can, it's kind of one of those things that you could get somebody in between. Um, a thousand yards in his last, what, six seasons is, is eight seasons he's been in. He's been 800 yards or better. Um, eight years of playing, I think, has been 100 yards or better. I mean, how do you argue against Travis Kelsey? He doesn't suffer injuries that take him out season long. He's, the team loves him. Touch wood. <laughs> he's just good. Like, how do, you, how do you argue really against him, right? It's hard. Um, That's he's going to finish the season with like 11 to 1200 yards again seven touchdowns already like, who knows um so yeah i think that's fine i'm I, I honestly wouldn't straight up take him unless i was really trying to do something but i also don't have enough enough to argue against because the consistency is king in in the first not, not upside in my opinion it's consistent good point i agree uh who are your alternates um you're gonna laugh at this one um zeke is an alternate uh he's finishing on the season with i think he's already at 1100 yards on scrimmage with like 10 touchdowns close to that doesn't he's seem like it blip. i know it does not it, it feels completely weird um i feel like I pollard see. looks better looks more explosive than zeke is that bad I to say team that i so when i was watching pollard Pollard looks better, but Pollard doesn't block like Zeke. Pollard, who kind of looks like he needs Zeke to kind of wear them down, right? I think this is like going to be a, one of those better committee backs situations. Yeah. If, if anything, and I think I wrote it out in the article on my last trade article, was that look at this as if you would, and then we talked about four, DeMarco Murray, De Henry, De, DeMarco Murray, De, Derrick Henry, or uh, look at it as more of this year's Melvin Gordon, Javante Williams. Situ- like, like the thing about Zeke, though, he's been kind of a monster in the red zone. He's getting touchdowns and touchdown touchdown every single week yeah so it puts him at a weird consistency level i think he's right now at nine rushing and i think one receiving so he's at 10 touchdowns and about 1100 yards on scrimmage so he's there he's doing the work to be fantasy relevant and they're paying him so there's nothing much they can do to get rid of him no they can't they went and paid him and then, Dummy. and then Paul are to top it off just hasn't been good starting off i think he's a great relief back um oh he's come on yeah. now i think you, no, he's I think, a great relief i think you're selling him player. a little short um, but this is also how the Dallas has always kind of done, right? Mm. There's always been a Pollard on this. There's always been that guy that comes in the second that helps out, right? Ruben Randall was that guy. Something Lance, I think, another another guy, but he was the receiving version. Um, Alfred Morris, when he was there, he was there's always some guy that plays that secondary, but that that works in his benefit. I think Tommy Pollard will start taking more carries, and it starts to look like a 60-40, a beneficial 60, a Melvin Gordon to a to a Javante Williams, and that's fine because that's still fantasy relevant. But it'll be better. They won't be as bad because they have a better line, better offensive weapons, and a ba- sadly, say better quarterback play than the Broncos. Um, so it works in their favor. They can get down the field, and these guys can punch their heads in for six points. And I think that's where they're going to live. And I think that as an alternate isn't the worst. If you were looking for a running back, you could possibly trust to be relevant and and survive the season. I think Zeke is that guy. Yeah, I just uh, out of, out of curiosity, I just got up the Pollard stat uh, stats here, uh, fantasy point wise, or actually RB finish wise. Uh, if, since he's finished inside the top twenty uh, four of the last five weeks. 
Yeah, they're doing well together. And I think they do better together. You know, you don't want these guys having a thousand touches. You know? and, uh, and Pollard, we see, you know, when he starts off, he does get stuffed quite a bit. But when he comes in and he has his own little, you know, drive, it's really good because this team can't handle two amazing guys or two, one solid guy and one amazing guy. How about that? That is a conference, right? Yeah, okay. So two above average guys coming in there, putting in work. Yeah. I think that'll and be, yeah, and Davis, that'll be something too uh, that'll be, uh, topical next season is is I think people will want to draft the the Madisons, the Pollards, the the Hunts, Definitely. the you know uh, people will want these these players and the, on their bench so that you can uh, I mean I I drafted Ma- Madison and boy we, did he ever come in handy for me to to, to just plug in. Monty Booker was handy this season, right? Like and that that's another one. Yep. Leonard Fournette was handy this season. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he was kind of always going to be the I mean, Ronald Jones. So that's a uh, that's our look, uh, our Christmas look, and uh, for the oh, season. My last one was Alvin Kamara. He's my alternate too. I just, oh, right. I just, he's not healthy. Oh, I'm sorry. He's not healthy. No, you're fine. We did talk about him earlier, and it's just the same thing. I just don't think he can survive a season. He needs to be in a committee, and I don't I don't like him in between the tackles. He's a very weird way to say a one-dimensional dual threat runner. Mm. We're starting to see it, right? He's not surviving. So that's why he's an alternate for me. He's probably a second rounder. Right. right. That's fair. Uh, mm-hmm. It's it's fair. I mean, I ha- I still have him in the top top 12. And, then, and like I see, this is very early, early days, of course. Way early days. Too early to be talking about this stuff, some say. Way but, too early for us. But but, I mean, fun. but I mean, the thing is, is that we were going through uh, what what we had in August. I don't know. It doesn't matter what we do, Davis. Uh, we, we just <laughs> when we when we look at when we look at the the rankings, uh, you know, in hindsight, we just shake our heads and and we'll do it again in three hundred and sixty five days, probably. <laughs> I mean, find me a person that can get the top twelve picks a hundred percent correct, please. <laughs> find me a guy. Find me the find me a guy or gal that can do it. Yeah, don't know, don't know if there's such a person. You got to be like, you know, I don't know. Sometimes you know the way fantasy goes. Sometimes I think I think I don't know. I think we are living in a simulation. Some of the crazy stuff we see are like like this week. Take for example, like I mean, all the f- they say start your studs. <laughs> well, I started yeah, I started my studs and they turned into studs right at the wrong time and like but it wasn't just me it was everybody's studs you know all this i think this happens to be that one bad app. i mean we'll see how the studs go tomorrow with cooper cup right if he does bad tomorrow then there will be a bad week i don't know i, I just don't see it His well worst week was, you, justin was jefferson bad. really didn't do that great today i mean he got he got a t- actually a t- the touchdown actually saved his fantasy day I mean, sure. I mean, um, four for 47 and a touchdown. I'm okay with that. I mean, it's not great, but fantasy greatness versus real life football is always going to be two different. <laughs> and I mean, as we said early in the show, like people are expecting 15 points a week, but that's not the norm. It, it really hasn't been. I mean, I guess that's kind of the norm for PPR, but realistically, the norm should be 10 10. It should be the floor, not the team. And he hit it. He has eight and a half points plus the six. So he's at 14 and a half points. And that's what makes Jefferson, Jefferson so good, right? Like, I want, if my guy can get 60 yards a week, four catches, and a chance at a touchdown, that's a solid player every single week. That's startable every week. Yeah. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, uh, Davis, and thank you for coming on the Fantasy Edge 2. This is my last uh, podcast until I'm not going to be, uh, there'll be no podcast next week uh, uh, on Monday for the holidays. Yeah, I've got taking the week off. Um, I still will do one last blurb view uh, for for the week. Uh, that'll be out on Friday. I'm no longer doing the rest of the season. The rest of the season, there's not much rest of to do, se- of rest of season to do, so so, so I'm just going to, there'll be the blurb view and you'll be able to see that at Friday at 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve. You'll still be able to have the blurb view. So uh, I have some time this week in, in between my Christmas getting readiness to, uh, to actually do some writing. So I'll be able to get that done. Davis, thanks again for joining us on the Fantasy Edge. We hope to talk to you soon and maybe do another show uh, after all this is over and before the Super Bowl. I'm sure we'll have another show. Oh, man, I-, I hope so, right? Uh, thanks for having me on. It's been a fun year. I attended way more shows than I thought I was able to. <laughs> and, you know, Merry Christmas to you and any of the listeners that we do have. Thanks. Um, you know, ever so many, right? Jokes aside. Uh, I'm going to be glad that you guys come back next year and hopefully I come back next year myself. Yeah. You know, we'll see. COVID is hopefully... Um, this does 
disease that we don't know that may or may not exist. <laughs> you know, might be gone and I might not be. I might have more free time to not be at home. It's the unspecified. <laughs> it's the unspecified disease of unknown origin. <laughs> And anyone that's in their championships this year or semifinal, best of luck. Do your due diligence. You know what to look out for. Look out for weather. That's the one thing that people won't forget about. And um, I'm going to try to win the best ball championship tournament. I'm actually moving on to the semifinal. So we'll see. Good luck with that. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. And thank you for joining us for the Fantasy Edge. We'll talk to you soon.